Now, I'd seen this a few times. Mm -hmm. However, it's been a very long time, I realized, since I'd seen it start to finish. Mm -hmm. Maybe two, three years. Mm. Which is saying a lot because generally around October, I just, I cycle through Mm -hmm. like my old favorites. Yeah, I hadn't seen this. I thought I saw it, but actually upon watching it, I realized I'd never seen it. At all or just? Well, I mean, I'd seen like clips from it and I'd seen some of the kills. Yeah. But. So do you have some notes prepared? I do. Uh, I was, I was shocked how, uh, this is going to sound weird. I was shocked how small this movie was. Yeah, in a way. Because the plot of this movie, I don't know if you know this, like as a normie, like you walk into Hellraiser like, oh, it's about Pinhead and the Cenobites. It's like, no, not really. Like they're in it. And like they're in it in the beginning and the end, but that's not what the fuck it is. It's about uh, it's about uh, Julia, played by Claire Higgins, who moves into um, their late uh, her late mother in law's abandoned house with her husband uh, Larry, played by Andrew Robinson, um, and she encounters the undead body of uh, her brother-in-law, Frank, played by Sean Chapman, who she had had an affair with. A really weird, creepy, sadomasochist affair with. Um, and she ba- yeah, he basically tells yeah. her, like, I, your, your brother had an accident in this room and bled on yeah, the floor. It, it's because he, he cuts his hand on the nail. Yeah, carrying the bed into the house. And then the blood brings back Frank. He's like, I need you to, like... Basically bring more blood into this bring house. Bring more blood. So she has to start killing dudes mm-hmm. to... To uh, bring Frank back to life. And I thought that'd be pretty interesting to be like, uh, I was in a Hellraiser as horny businessman. Oh, With wh- bad hair? Yeah. No, no, no. It's like, <laughs> which one? <laughs> yeah. It's like, which one? Well, I was creepy horny businessman. My friend played I careful horny businessman. <laughs> And then my my third friend played uh what the what balding was, business. No, what man. was his, what was his deal? <laughs> Which guy? The third one. He he, he was had, like the guy. He was like I don't know. Like he was the guy that was like I don't know. Oh, he was like I don't know if I can stay here. Like he was like kind of cautious. Wasn't he the one where he's like going up the stairs? He's like oh, I don't know about this. And she's like No, that's okay. And wasn't the second guy like Oh well uh, well there's no bed in here. And she's like No no no. He's like, he's like. I, I'm usually he's like I'm out, I'm usually cautious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. So it's like I played a third creepy horny businessman. <laughs> I played creepy horny businessman number one. Yes. What I role that'd be? Played balding horny businessman. <laughs> Which one? Uh, yeah. Two. Oh, All right. Okay. Anyway, but I just want to throw that tidbit out there. I was shocked at how, like, Al- Edgar Allan Poe meets H.P. Lovecraft. The premise was. Like, I forgot about, like, what the movie is actually about. And it's not about, like, oh, man, Pinhead's around, like, he's killing people. It's like, no, it's it's a lot more deep than that. It's about no. a really fucked up relationship. Well, it's about a fucked up relationship, but it's also, I noticed that the themes are very noticeable in this one. Yes. The themes are about, like, morality and desire. Yes, and pain and, and the line between the two, and if there is one for some people. Oh, pain and pleasure and all yeah, that. Yeah. It's like sort of like a, what you call it? Sadomasochism? Yeah, sadomasochism, that's like a big part of this. Yeah. And that's just something that makes this really, from a story sense, mm-hmm. there's more to it than just, oh, this is just a slasher, which... Don't get me wrong. I'm all about the slashers. Oh, yeah. But I'm not going to act like the slashers often have, like, a lot to them. Like, yeah. Like that movie Night Prowler, which is, weirdly enough, right. ri- written by, like, either Hannah or Barbara's, like, son. Right, right. Sorry, uh, it's just called Prowler, not Night Prowler. Anyway, so it's, like, his credits on IMDb. It's, like, this one slasher movie, and mm-hmm. then all like Jetsons remakes and stuff. (laughs) Anyway, the point is there's a lot more to this. And it's dare I say Hitchcockian. Yeah. It's very like there's something afoot and someone has to do some amoral shit in order to sustain some artifice of normality. And then the Cenobites, they're not like an afterthought, but they're like, they're they're there. They're, they're almost in a weird way. Like they're, they're sort of enforcers Mm -hmm. because it's like, the story plays out between Frank and Julia, mm-hmm. but because Frank had the puzzle box, which is a huge 
one of the I would say, I would go to say one of my favorite movie MacGuffins. Oh yeah, really great MacGuffin. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So the idea is, the story plays out, and then the Cenobites are like, "Well, now we got to deal with this," mm-hmm. because they they seem almost like you know, like godlike. Yeah, they're very omnipotent and present. Right. So that that's part of the thing is that. All the characters in this are interesting. Mm-hmm. I like every character for one reason or another. Yes, like the, the dad has is like sort of quirky he's and kind loud, of a, kind of a doof. Yeah, he's not a bad guy. No, he's just kind of a dork. Like yeah. just a dad. He's like a nineties dad. Then Julia, you're just like, oh, what a snake. Yeah, she's like, but I've oh man, I I don't I really bought her like she knows her, like this yeah. is a bad this is a bad relationship I'm in and it's really coming to bite me in the ass now and it's like. But at she the, wants it. But she that, wants that's to be with thing. this guy. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. when it came to her her desires, she gave in. In a very Hitchcockian way. It fucking right. consumed her soul. Yeah, quite literally. Quite literally <laughs> later, yeah. But, yeah, fuck it, we're talking spoilers, obviously. Yes. I really think her performance in general is super underrated. Oh, yeah, she's great. She, she's so creepy. Claire this. Higgins. She yeah. actually didn't see the movie. Really? Yeah, she w- she watched about ten minutes of it during the premiere, and she had to walk out because she says she's she's not good watching horror movies. Oh. But I'm like, you were on set, like, yeah. So you saw the weird shit. Yeah, you I saw the like weird meat goon. nailed to columns and yeah, stuff, faces on the floor, and shit. yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Also, in addition to the fact that the story plays out and the sign and bites are there. Mm-hmm. What was I going to... Oh, the lore of the Hellraiser universe is expansive and detailed, I wrote down. Yeah, it's it's expansive, but it, it also leaves a lot open. You right. Know, you're like, what is this deal well, with the- That's what I mean, is you get the impression, because mm-hmm. you, you don't see the Cenobites for that long. Right. Pinhead's not really in it that much. No, and did you know that his name in the script is... Do you know what his name in the script is? What? It's just Priest. Really? Pinhead was like the nickname yeah. that crew members came up with. I mean, that figures, you know. I've been doing a lot of trivia, looking up of trivia and such. Uh, that's that, that's the, good to know. Fun little other one. Uh, Doug Bradley was given the cold shoulder at the cast party, he thought. But the whole reason why, when he realized later, was because no one recognized him. Oh, that's yeah. so weird. Other cast and crew like just didn't know who he was. Oh, so they're like, who's this guy? Yeah, so like no one was talking to him. He's like, what the fuck? I mean, he, he looks <laughs> quite different he looks, now. Yeah, but it's weird because, well, he was wearing, like, the contacts and shit, and he's got, like, different colored eyes in real yeah. life. But, yeah, man. Weird. So, again, back to the expansive universe. There's a lot. There, there's a lot of story beats. As yes. we discussed, there's bringing Frank back to life, mm-hmm. how Kirsty gets into this, the puzzle box, the Cenobites, mm-hmm. the creatures. Yes. The, 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 the idea dragons. of... <laughs> Skeleton dragon. Yeah, nice. dude. Uh, that, I think that's my last note I wrote down on the other page. <laughs> I wrote, uh, what was it? Here, uh, let's see. Oh, wor- weird earthworm monster. Yeah, yeah, looks like it's from hell. Uh, oh, yeah. Homeless dude turns into demon dragon. How can you not love that? <laughs> God, it's so fucking weird. Yeah. But, but, but cool in a oh, weird uh, way. <laughs> yeah, I also wrote in my notes, uh, Puzzle box. It's like an allegory for like iPhones, man. Whoa! There you go. Art. Take that, uh, bejeweled. What's the fucking game called? Cookie yeah. Jam. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> whatever the fuck it is. Or like Candy Crush. Candy Crush. Yeah. Yeah, man. There's no, your but puzzle box. There, there is something interesting about the puzzle boxes. Everyone's sort of enthralled with it when they touch when they touch it. Is our phone? Are they are, are our phones gateways to pleasure and pain? Both. Yeah, man. It's like, Whoa, it's like an allegory. Whoa, for the it's future. deep. It's deep, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's yeah. like the dude saw like Wall Street, and he's like, "Well, fuck cell phones." <laughs> Little did he know how right he was. He was right. It was. It's a cautionary tale. Hell, Hellraiser is. Yeah. No, but that that's what I'm saying is there's there's so much to this going on. Yeah. But they make it work, and it's also, this is the slow burn done right. Mm -hmm. Because you're, unlike Sinister, Mm -hmm. you get a glimpse of the Cenobites right away. Right, right. At the very beginning with Frank. Mm. And then they kind of go away for a while, and they're like, what's going on? But there's so much shit going on, and it works, and you're interested in it. You have something 
to latch on to in the meantime mm. before the hellish creatures go berserk in the ending. Because mm-hmm. that, my friends, is how you do a finale. <laughs> Uh, you got the the earthworm monster chasing Kirsty. Yep. yep. Also, small point: the set design in this is really fantastic. I was gonna say that too. Is like I got a really good sense of like the layout of the house. Yeah. Like, really, really well. Like I, I knew I I could like probably recite the architect like the blueprint of what that house is like in my sleep now because I mean it's pretty much just takes place there. Right. It's a good use of setting. Well, I was just, oh, I was going to say like the hospitals even. Yeah. Because I, I thought they did a perfect job of introducing the idea of the, the gateways to hell opening mm-hmm. on earth. Yeah. Because every, there's so many frames in this movie where it just looks like a, a really good gothic painting. Yeah. Like a Hieronymus Bosch, like interpretation of hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's the other thing that we got to mention is like the set design and obviously the practical effects work right. is just man, it's it's primo. I mean the the chat te- the chatterer. Yeah, what yeah. the hell? <clears throat> I, I don't know their official names. The I just Cenobites. call them like Teeth Man, yeah. Fat Neck Guy, <laughs> yeah. Lady Cenobite, <laughs> yeah. <and> Pinhead. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically how how I, I'd call it. <laughs> Lady Cenobite reminds me of the 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 stranger that claymation thing. It's like, who uh, are you? An angel. Oh, God, the, the Mark Twain fucking uh, one. I'm not even joking. That creeps me right the hell out. Oh, man. She kind of reminds me of, like, what the fuck was the, the lady's name from Superman 2 that was with Zod? Uh, uh, Fe- uh, it was Feora, I thought. I, Ursa, was, that's right. Ursa, name. sorry. She, she reminds me of, like, Ursa, but, like, like Sinead O'Connor version. Yeah, basically. <laughs> well, okay, here's another thing I, I have. It's that... Each of the pe- each of the scary elements, they're scary for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Like the Cenobites are creepy in a different way than Julia is, and that was kind of, I thought that went along with the themes. It's like here's here's Earth as it is. There's not like nothing impossible about her like murdering these people, and then the impossible happens when these Cenobites arrive. Mm. So it's like it's almost like the Cenobites are like. Like weird, like janitors of some kind. Yeah, I like janitors, but like that's not the right term. But like, what do they say? They feel they are explorers. Yeah, <laughs> like we like we're we're here to fuck shit up. Right, right. Like that. That's their whole thing, and that that's like Pinhead in general. He's just so stoic. You know, he's an excellent villain, mm-hmm. and he's so he's so tied to the themes of the movie. Oh, whereas yeah. Whereas like. Michael Myers, you just kind of assume the themes based on what he's doing, but in reality, Michael Myers is just a psychopath. Right. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't really seem to have an... Like, there's implied purposes, but he doesn't talk, so he doesn't express them. Right. But I I like uh, Pinhead when it's just like, no tears. Yeah. You know, he's just so creepy to Kirsty. Kirsty, who I like to call not Natalie Portman. <laughs> She was good too. Wasn't that her first movie, if I'm not mistaken? It said introducing. Yeah, she was all right. I mean, she wasn't amazing. But <laughs> there are couples towards the end, like I'm like ah ah man, <laughs> you're you're just hating. Everyone else is fine. I thought, I thought she thought, was fine. I thought Julia was the best because I'm like yeah. oh man, she's really she's really bringing it. And I like Larry. I like Larry, the actor who played Larry, Andrew Robinson, who also played Scorpio in Dirty Harry. Also, him uh, as Frank. Presto, you're dead. What is Chucky that? kills him in Child's Play 3. That's true. He's the barber at the military school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Looks like you need a soldier, or a haircut soldier. Oh, man. So, fun little f- trivia fact. This Guess what this movie was originally called? What's that? Mm-hmm. How, was it Hellbound Heart? Yes. But, yeah, because the, the novella. Yes, but they wanted to change the name, and they put it up to the crew. I think one of the names that they sent back to the studio, I think just to piss them off, was like, a sadomas- a sadomasochist's Guide to Love or some shit. Like, <laughs> that's too long. And, like, yeah. I guess one of the crew members, who is a 60-year-old woman, Clive Barker says, uh, put up the name, uh, What a Woman Will Do for a Good Fuck. Wow. <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's kind of fucking cool. That's that's interesting that, yes. that she came up with that title. Yeah, man. There's a lot of... Pr- Go check the IMDb trivia section out. There's a lot of fun stories about yeah, There's some good stuff. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. So in general, I I, I really liked this, and after a second viewing, I, I kind of liked it more because, again, with with these academic viewings, you mm. try and you try to pay a little closer attention, and mm. I kind of felt like how everything meshed together was what made this such a cool movie is because like most movies, it's like, there's a killer. Okay. He killed someone. All right. Now it's like the characters dealing with it. Mm. And then it's like, now we move on from scene to scene. People get killed along the way and you either get away or the killer wins. Right. This is like, this isn't like that. It's not that simple. Well, it's, it has what every, every horror movie, I think, should benefit from, which is, drum roll, moral intrigue. Right. Despite what people might think. It's not the scares. Well, scares help. But, like, what the fuck is Friday the 13th about on the end of the, at the end of the day? I mean, he's killing all the counselors who were banging. Well, yeah. And it's, like, it's about, like, the cost of negligence. And, like, right. the, moral, the moral fallout of making one mistake. And why he chooses to only attack the camp. Right. Real, well... Oh, Jesus Christ. In the ones that count. Right. And like... <laughs> he only attacks the camp. Most, Nightmare, on Elm, mostly. Nightmare on Elm Street in a similar way is like how mistakes can transfer via uh, heredity. Her- hereditariness? I don't know what... Hered- is it heredity, right? Sure. Yes. How they can pass down from child, from father, uh, parent to child. Or like Psycho is about, you know, trying to maintain normalcy right. when, you know, your, your world is falling apart and you have no mom. You fucking killed her. You know, this is about... Trying to go back to a disgusting relationship when it's the only thing in your fucked up mind believe is that you believe is worth it. And I thought that right. that moral center, and fucked then, up as it was, was really interesting. Yeah, and then it, it's basically like Kirsty in a weird way. She like almost isn't the main character. No, she's like a she's a, a uh, what do you call it? Not a bystander. But that means she doesn't do anything. Like she's a uh, she's kind of left. She's in the crossfire. You know, she, that's what I kind of like. Again, that that's she's collateral. What, that's what's cool though. It's like this isn't oh here's your established like main character mm-hmm. root for this person. No, it's she, like she's there. Julia's like mainly the main character for the first like two thirds of this. Yeah, until uh Chris or Kirsty gets committed. Then you're like, all right, let's fucking go. Open yeah. that puzzle box. Now close the fucking puzzle box and get the yeah. fuck out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that that again, that's that's interesting. Uh, what the fuck was I gonna say? Yeah, the the crossfire thing. Mm-hmm. Well, and similar to Psycho, you think it's Janet Lee? Nope. Nope. It's fucking uh, Vera Miles. That's what I'm saying. It just it it jumps from place to place without being too sporadic. Right. Right, and I, I also I love the scene where it's like, she, you know, she's so pissed that her dad is dead. It's like I can get you, Frank. It's like, yeah. and it's like, like you, you're like he's dead or whatever. It's like no, he's alive. No, it's like you know, I I can make a deal. It's like, all right, that, that that's what makes him such a cooler villain. He's not like he he he. I'm going to get you. And then the he, dramatic he, irony of like, where's the man who did this? It's like no, you can't hurt him. It's like. It's not your, it's not your dad. <laughs> it's like, did, did you see his head? Also, good performance out of Larry Robinson when he had to to be Frank. Sorry, I meant Andrew Robinson. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. That's what the, I said. Those like, performances a great. Like he's the, a different person. Obviously, those, those performances. Uh, I, I won't give away a particular movie, but th- those performances can be. They can range greatly. Those, mm. per, you know, what I'm talking about the. I'm. I'm. I've possessed the body of someone else performances. Yeah, like, yeah. Those can be really shitty sometimes. And his was actually perfect. It was spot on. The Jesus, and, the Jesus wept line was his, uh, that was his edition. Andrew really? Robinson's. Yeah, the line was originally, fuck you. Oh. <laughs> but Andrew Robinson's like, let's just try something different. Let's do Jesus wept. Clyde Barker's like, all right. That's, and, there, and there's another element. I'm just saying, like, at the end... All this crazy shit just spirals out of control, mm-hmm. and then the Cenobites just come strolling in, think you know, and they just kind of say, "All right, so here's the deal: we're, like shit's gotten fucked up, and, and we're solving this right now." Mm-hmm. And they even tell uh, Kirsty, like, I "Make no promises," you know, about her. Oh, herself. about like the deal they're gonna make? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I know you think you can bargain with us, but we're, we're not so sure about that. And it's the idea that he ponders that and that he toys around with the situation because it's almost 
again, the, the omnipotence of the Cenobites, they feel like they have so much more control. Right, right. Because even with Jason and Freddy and... Well, Freddy's a bad example. Like, Jason and Michael, mm-hmm. they can only control so much. Right. And that's mostly the way they, they prey upon people. Exactly. But but uh, the Cenobites are the, the even more upper echelon of, of apex predators. They sure are. Yeah. So, overall, I thought it was, a, it was excellent to watch again. The cinematography, the set design... The acting, mm-hmm. the storyline, though, is really, really, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's expansive. Oh, yeah. It's real fun. It, it's a real good one. And it wasn't I mean, what I was expecting in a, good, in a pretty damn good way. Now, to me, this is an obvious classic, so I knew it was perfect score to me. Mm. Now that you've seen this for mostly the first time, where, where, where are you... Where, where are you uh, What's your opinion on that score? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you three guesses. Oh my god! If you three seven no eight no eight point five no seven point five. Oh, you suck! This movie is <laughs> so much better than seven point. But keep in mind, I'm not a horror fan at all. Oh yeah, because so that's the, pretty fucking good. You, you did suggest sinister, yes, <laughs> which is not as good as this. I mean, I had fun like. Making fun of Sinister, yes, at the very least. But this is a genuinely good movie, and it has a genuinely good premise that I wasn't honestly expecting. I didn't think I thought it would just be like gore fest, like the others. No, it, it's but it's really a personal story about two really fucked up people. And it, it's re- that's the weird thing is two and even three to an extent mm-hmm. stay mostly. It's just four. It takes a nosedive. Yeesh, because it. it it tries to do a lot of, st- like Bloodlines tries to do some interesting stuff, but it's, you know, I said this is sort of it. It's expansive without being too sporadic. Yeah. For it's like this is too all over the place. Hmm. It has a young, uh, what's the guy Adam Scott? Yeah, it has a young Adam Scott in it. Oh, which one? Number four. Oh God. Yeah, number number four is absolutely no good. Was that Debtor? No, that was God. That was number like six or seven. Yeesh. Debtor's the one with uh, Carrie Wurr in Romania. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Four four is the one where they like go back in time, but also go forward in time to the future, and they involve a space station. Mm. It's an Alan Smithy joint, if that says anything. Oh Jesus Christ! For those crazy. of you playing at home. Alan Smithy is a pseudonym used when a director wants to disown a movie he worked on. There's not a, a whole ton of them, but but this one was bad enough for... Uh, when they happen, yeah, they happen with a bang. They happen every now and then. Anyway, though, I really like this one. I consider it a classic, so I give it a perfect score. You give it a 7.5 out of 5. Highly recommended. Okay, so if you haven't seen Hellraiser, I, I would definitely suggest it.